Toxic people don't just gaslight, they also project onto you. A lot of times they'll project what they're feeling, what they're thinking onto another person so they don't have to have it. So they don't have to internalize what's actually going on. So they don't have to acknowledge what's actually there. Did you have times in your relationship where you were with that person and it felt like what I'm experiencing right now is not my own? Like, why are you saying that I'm mad when I'm not walking into this conversation mad? Why are you saying that I'm frustrated when I haven't been frustrated all day? Why are you saying, and you start recognizing that you're defending yourself off of things that you're not doing. Like you're defending yourself from things that you're not coming into the conversation or into that day or into that environment or setting with, but the other person is accusing you of. You might be experiencing something like projection. And I wanna be able to dive in and be able to tell you a little bit about that. If you don't know who I am or why I'm on here, my name is Ben Taylor. I run Raw Motivations as a self-aware narcissist. And I'm on this platform to bring around awareness about what narcissism is. I want to be able to help people to get healing, growth, and change in a day-to-day -day basis. I do this by producing videos, by hosting live events, by talking to people on one-on-one -on -one because I want people to be able to get help and so they don't get sucked into these type of relationships because this is what I've done. This is how I've lived. I'm trying to be honest and real and raw on here to be able to talk to people and share with what it does, how destructive it is, and how to avoid it. One of the ways to avoid it is to be able to see it, and a lot of times people don't see it. Whether I'm sitting down with, you know, a one-on-one -on -one with someone who's young or whether I'm sitting down with a one-on-one -on -one with someone who's old. Sometimes it's someone who has a high school degree. Sometimes it has someone who has a master's. Sometimes it's a psychologist. Sometimes it's a plumber. At the end of the day, everybody gets affected by these relationships. No matter their status, no matter their IQ, no matter anything. Because they don't see it coming and they don't understand the aspects of it. If that's you and you want to talk sometime, would love to talk to you. Reach out at rawmotivations.com. Be able to schedule a time. If you want to join a community of people, a support group that's actually there helping uphold each other through community, through live events, through Zoom calls, through uh, tracking your no contact, recording your truth, and learning about it through coursework, then check out the NARC app. N-A-R-C, NARC, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. It's on Apple, Google Play. would love to have you join and be a part of a growing community. As of the time of this recording, there's around 3,000 people that have downloaded it, logged in, and are starting on their healing journey. I hope you'll join us there. But projection. We've all heard about gaslighting, where the, the narcissist, the sociopath, the sociopath, the toxic person is you know, saying, hey, this didn't happen. This didn't exist. Okay, but what about the other aspect of like projection where they're placing something on top of you? Like they're placing something on top of you that you have to take your time to be able to defend, be able to say that's not me, and it distracts you from everything else going on. A lot of times it distracts you from actually dealing with the situation at hand, which is the toxic person. A lot of times they will put that on you to blame and to blame shift what they're feeling. We've been going through the book recently, Psychopath Free, taking different excerpts of it, talking through, explaining some about it. And one thing I wanted to talk through is there's actually a quote in here from, um, in the book that's from the, their administrator uh, under Psychopath Free. And she actually talks about the idea of projection. And she explains it really well in a couple paragraphs. So I'm going to read it and then we'll talk about it some. Okay. All right, so psychopaths project and blame you for their own behavior. They accuse you of being negative when they are the most negative people in the world. They gaslight you into believing that your normal reactions to their abuse are the problem, not the abuse itself. When you feel angry and hurt because of their silent treatment, broken promises, lying, or cheating, there is something wrong with you. When you call them out for their dishonest behavior, you're the abnormal one who is too sensitive, too critical, and always focusing on the negative. This is all part of the brainwashing process, acting inappropriately, unacceptably, downright absurdly, and then trying to turn it around to make it your fault. They intentionally cause pain you don't deserve, all the while denying that you've done anything to begin with. And on top of that, they try to make it your fault, so that you blame yourself for something that supposedly didn't even happen. Yes, reread that again. How illogical it is. It is their parting gift to dump all the blame on you for the looming failure of the relationship. Problem is, it never had a chance to begin with. 
If you only had maintained the glowing optimism and naivety that you had during the love bombing stage throughout all of their subsequent lies and abuse, then everything would have been fine. If only you hadn't questioned the contradictions and the lies you recalled from the letters that they later denied sending, yes, if only you had stayed compliant and quiet in spite of the overwhelming evidence staring you in the face, evidence they planted just to test you, then it would all be fine. But even then, they would become bored and disappointed that you hadn't caught on or challenged them, so they'd invent something to accuse you of in order to justify their abuse and create drama. No matter what you do, it's always a lose-lose situation with a psychopath. They want you to believe you're the loser when really it's them. How many of you can connect with that? Can connect with that thought of the so many times of them taking something and placing it on you and saying it's your fault. It's your fault for experiencing that emotion. It's your fault for what you saw. It's your fault that you found my phone and you found out that I was cheating on you. It is your fault. Then they put it back on you. And they put it back on you time and time again. And the thing is, it doesn't matter what you change. I talk to countless people that they talk to me on one-on-ones and on the Zoom calls and they're saying like, maybe if I would have done something different, maybe if I could have changed this one area, maybe if I could have listened in this one aspect, maybe if I didn't have to, you know, talk to them about this problem, maybe if I, and when it boils down to it, no matter how much you change, you're not going to change the other person. And when I talk to people, I'll ask them, how much did you change for him? How much did you change for her in that relationship? And they'll say, a lot. Like I changed everything. Like I changed how I looked. I changed how I acted. I changed how I responded. I changed, you know, my sleep patterns so I could get up earlier, so I could stay up later, like whatever it might be. They literally change everything about them for their toxic person. And then I have to ask, how did the toxic person demonstrate change? There's normally like a pause and like a silence on the other end as they stop and they realize that the only person in the relationship that actually demonstrated any type of change was themselves. And that the toxic person on the other side didn't demonstrate change and didn't care to. And as a result, they never did. And any change that was there was often short-lived and kind of like a flash in the pan, a wisp of smoke that vanished, but it never lasted. Whereas the changes they had, they're still dealing with after the relationship, trying to figure out who they actually are, trying to figure out where their self-esteem went, trying to figure out where their self-confidence went because that was all there before they changed it for that toxic person. The toxic person, like it said here, they'll project onto you their feelings, their emotions, their thoughts, their problems. Sometimes, a lot of times, the reason why they project onto you is because they don't have anything on you. Because you're not out there cheating like they are. You're not out there abusing other people like they are. We're talking countless people that have communicated their story that the toxic person had to make something up, had to vilify and make the other person a monster to justify themselves getting out of the relationship. Like the toxic person had to tell the person who was not abusive, hey, you've been abusing me. I'm scared of you. I'm concerned because of what you're going to do to me. When it was the toxic person screaming and yelling at them. The toxic person manufacturing stories of abuse, manufacturing stories of how they were the victim, manufacturing all those different things to be able to put on the other person to be able to justify it, to be able to justify their abuse or to justify their discard. And when people don't put up with that, when people don't put up with, no, this is not my problem, this is not my fault, they'll manufacture, they'll twist, they'll do whatever they can to leave. I was talking to someone the other day, and they said it the clearest. You don't normally hear this from a narcissist. But they ended up saying to their person, so the toxic person said to the non-toxic person, they said, I couldn't find a reason to hate you, so that's why I lied. 
and they manufactured this whole thing through the court system, through protective orders, all this type of stuff that didn't have any validation, any truth behind it, but they needed something to justify to themselves what they'd done to that other person and to justify them leaving. A narcissist will project tons onto you because as that guilt, as that shame starts to build up and realizing their own thoughts, their own emotions, their own feelings, the easiest way to get past that is to shove it off onto someone else because the thought of working through the own thoughts and feelings, guilt and shame seems impossible, seems too hard for them to do. And that's why a narcissist won't change because they're unwilling to acknowledge the truth of the situation, be vulnerable about how they feel, accept responsibility and take accountability for their actions and then put in the daily freaking work every single time. Otherwise, no change is there. 